Minnesota Vikings, Marcus strolls up and down night ends badly. It was all gift-wrapped for Marcus Strolls, the Vikings' best single-game punt returner and quintessential roster survivalist. The easy interception, the clear shot to the end zone and cape as Minnesota special teams and defensive heroes on a Monday night when two of the NFL's worst teams showcase their broken offenses for a national television audience. Strolls, whose 119 punt return yards broke Charlie West's 1968 record for most in a game, already had returned 186 yards in the first quarter for the Vikings' only points, his second career scoring return. Here was the undrafted free agent and former University of Minnesota walk-on playing cornerback in the Vikings' dilapidated secondary late in the third quarter, defending Giants receiver Victor Cruz on third and ten at New York's 33-yard line. Shrill's read they like Manning and perfectly jumped the sideline route, cutting off the quarterback's flat throw and staring at an unimpeded dash to the end zone that would erase a 10-7 deficit. Only the ball hit Shrill's hands and bounded harmlessly to the turf. He threw it up, gave me a chance, and I just flat out dropped it, Shrill's lamented. No interception. No momentum. Only more misery for the Vikings' beleaguered special teams. On New York's ensuing punt. Shrills tripped and fell at his 13-yard line, fumbling as he hit the turf untouched. The ball squirted away and was recovered by Giants long snapper Zach Diossi at Minnesota's 3-yard line. Two plays later, the Giants turned Shrills' gaffs into a 14-point swing when Peyton Hills rumbled into the end zone for a 1-yard touchdown that secured their eventual 23-7 victory. Those are two mistakes there that changed the game, Shrills said. Can't happen. It was a game of splash plays, costly turnovers and one by past opportunity for Minnesota special teams. Veteran long snapper Colin Lerfler recovered Ruben Randall's fumbled punt returned at New York's 31-yard line late in the third quarter. The quarterback Josh Freeman was backed on third down for a 14-yard loss, pushing Minnesota out of the wing kicker Blair Walsh's range. Walsh's hamstring injury in his left plant leg sidelined him for kickoffs the second straight week in favor of Hunter Jeff Locke. It also ended an impressive streak for the second-year kicker. Walsh came up just short on a 53-yard attempt that would have tied the score 10-10 midway through the second quarter. It was his first miss from 50-plus yards after Walsh converted his first 12 attempts from that distance, an NFL record. With the Vikings facing an identical field goal try following Freeman's sack, coach Leslie Frazier called Walsh back to the sideline and dispatched the punting unit. Lock boomed his punt two yards deep into the end zone, a touchback that gave New York the ball at its 20-yard line after a net punt of only 15 yards. Walsh insisted he could have made the necessary adjustment to make a second 53-yard attempt, and special teams coordinator Mike Prefer said there was no ceiling on distance for his kicker. I think it was more a field position flash situational type thing, Prefer said. Frazier was worried because Blair was short on the first one. Said Walsh. There's no reason I should have missed it short. Obviously, I'm not 100%, but at the same time, I have to treat it like I am. I'm capable of making that kick, for sure. Josh Brown's 23-yard field goal early in the fourth quarter extended the Giants' lead to 20-7. And there were more troubles for the Vikings' special teams. On the ensuing kickoff, Brown short-legged it to Minnesota's 13-yard line where rookie defensive tackle Shara Floyd backpedaled to field the punt. He was quickly hit and fumbled, and New York recovering in the ensuing scramble at the 7-yard line to set up another field goal. We talked about never backing up and catching it. Floyd got caught up in the moment and caught it, Prefer said. It's a young player caught in the moment, 